what is innovation? What does Edinburgh Innovations do? What can we do for freelancers? Uh, we've got Ross here with us today. He's one of Edinburgh Innovations one one business advisors. Uh, he's got some top tips for freelancers, and then uh, that's a pre-recorded segment. And then we're going to go into um, developers. And then if you've got any questions throughout, uh, please just pop them in the chat and let us know what we can do to to help. Um, and also, uh, if you're here and you would like to, please pop in the chat, uh, Amy, Chris, and Paulina. Paulina already uh, mentioned to us that um, they're a PhD student at Informatics and Psychology and are interested in, in web developing. Uh, Amy and Chris and anyone else who joins us, if you could just let us know um, uh, why you're joining us today and what your, your take on freelancing is. Do you currently freelance? Uh, are you thinking of freelancing, et cetera? So uh, Edinburgh Innovations is um, the University of Edinburgh's Innovation Management Service, also known as the Commercialization Service. And essentially, what that means is wherever um, university's activity and industry meet, we help manage that space in the middle. And, and our goal is to get the really impressive entrepreneurial activity and, and interesting research and amazing things happening at the university out into the world and, and making it a, a better place. And the mechanism in which that happens these days is, is through essentially commercialization, starting a business, social enterprise, charity, etc. Um, as far as as far as far uh, student entrepreneurial activity goes. That's great, Chris. Thanks very much. Um, so it's our remit and the student enterprise department at Edinburgh Innovations to help out the student or alumni up to two years after graduation who's interested in starting their own business, becoming a freelancer, starting a charity or, or a social enterprise. So um, we do things like, like try to help inspire an entrepreneurial community with events like this uh, and with ideation events where we help people to come up with a, a startup idea based on what they're, they're passionate about and what skills, network experience, knowledge they have. We've got uh, constantly open uh, business ideas competitions where we give out 500 pounds every month. Uh, you can just tell us about your idea and we'll um, and enter our competition. and. The chance not, not just for a bit of funding, but um, for a uh, chance to join our, our entrepreneurial community and get feedback for your idea. I just posted our website into the, the chat there. Um, so we've got a series of competitions, workshops, weekend programs. One advice is for freelancers, for the most part, et cetera. Um, these are just some of the things that we do. If you've got any questions, uh, please do take a look at our website, take a look around, and uh, always feel free to email me if you have any questions. I'll move on for now. Uh, I could go on about what we do for, for hours, which perhaps says that um, I've oversubscribed myself a bit. But uh, um, we're, We've got some really wide-ranging activities. We are here for, for students who are interested in starting their own businesses, including freelancers. And it's that's, that's our job this week. Please do have a look at what we do. So, um, I'm Ross. I'm one of the advisors. So um, I spoke to Ross over the summer. He's here with us today, but uh, we, we, you know we do get uh, frequent requests for people wondering, you know, what are some top tips for freelancers. So we just decided to go ahead and, and record the conversation for once. Um, and you, know, you got it. You got it really, really right that time. So um, we're just going to play that for you. If that's okay, and then um, and then we'll, we'll have a more specific discussion about what this could mean for web developers. And then if you have any questions. Just let us know. Hi everyone, so um, I'm Ross, I'm one of the advisors at Edinburgh Innovations and Bobby has asked me to uh, riff for about five minutes improvisationally about being a freelancer. Um, so here goes. Um, so first of all, before you even become a freelancer, like any business, you need to think about the market. What is the market for the business? Who are your customers going to be? And um, particularly, can you identify what your first few projects are going to be? Do you know what they're actually going to be? What you're going to do? So, um, you know, think about uh, that sort of thing before you actually go into the business. And if there you want to go into a market where there's going to be growing demand, then your skills are going to be in demand and in more demand as you get better known in that industry, rather than into an area where your skills are going to be less popular. So from that point, if you've got some savings or you've got some part-time work or something like that, that can really take off the pressure of you needing to have 
work to so that you can stay in your flat and feed yourself every day. So think about it that as well. Um, and then think about your skill set. Why are people going to use you, pay you to do things? Um, do you have a particular niche or specialization? Why are people going to choose you over other people that are available? So um, think about that as a, as a good idea. And obviously there's quite a few practicalities to consider as someone who's self-employed. Um, you need to register in self-employed if that's what you're going to do. Um, and a good way of thinking about that is when you start trading, um, you know, when somebody pays you for your services, then that's a good time to register as self-employed. But you actually have um, until October the 5th of the year af after the end of your first year trading to actually register as self-employed. <clears throat> so if you started in April this year, then you wouldn't actually have to register self-employed until October the 5th, 2021. I would say it's good practice to register once you start trading. Um, and then it's also very good practice to keep records of any um, expenses that you incur and any income that you receive, um, whether that's receipts or uh, bank statements or um, things like that, invoices, then that will make your life much easier when it comes to the next topic, which is tax. And, and when you register as self-employed, then you have to complete a self-assessment tax form. And so if you have all that information to hand, that will make your completion of that tax return much easier. And on that note, it's a good idea to remember to uh, keep some money, money aside, uh, because if you do make a profit, uh, then you might have to pay tax on that. Everyone has a tax-free allowance of up to twelve and a half thousand pounds, but if your if your profit is greater than that, you'll have to pay tax. So it's important not to spend all that money. Everyone also has an allowance where they can earn self-employed income of a, up to a thousand pounds without registering as self-employed. But um, hopefully, you'll earn more than that through this work. And then I think once you're actually being self-employed, you need to think about your process, your routine. So thinking about, you know, you've got to motivate yourself every day. Um, so often it's a good idea to get into a routine and try and sort of recreate that going to work um, kind of attitude so that you've got um, a clear routine and a clear way of working. And also the processes of actually undertaking work, whether it's invoicing people or uh, writing proposals or having contracts with people, these are all good things to think about. And there's lots of templates and guides online to look at that sort of thing. The pricing is always a big question that people ask about. Um, how do you set your prices? Um, and it's tricky, but there's a lot of different information out there looking at what other um, similar people are, off, are charging can be a good way of doing it. Um, but the important thing is to value what you're doing. Don't give your services away for free um, because, you know, your skills are, are worth, worth something for sure. And then the important thing, of course, in any business is your customers. So how do you get those customers and how do you keep those customers? So it's easier to keep customers than it is to get them in the first place. So um, using your network can be a good way to get customers. And that's often the way that um, people get work in the early days. Uh, and when I say network, that's just people that you know and people that the people that you know know. Um, uh, and then also there's, you know, the network at the University of Edinburgh. Um, so getting out there and speaking to people, saying that you're available, marketing your services, using projects you've done to market yourself going forward and collaborating with other people, working with other people can be a great way to find out what's going on and get new opportunities and can allow you to do more. So get out there and speak and it'll be amazing opportunities you come across. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks very much, Ross, for, for recording that for me um, over the summer, as I repeatedly asked him if he had any top tips for freelancers. Uh, Ross is actually with us today. And so um, I'm still like, sorry, I've still got camping, camping hair here. I came straight from Perth Street uh, to, to this um, this afternoon. So I'm still sort of stuck in the woods, really. Um, so uh, Ross, do you have any specific tips to come to mind? Um, in addition to the amazing tips that you've given us there, anything specific for uh, aspiring or current web developers? Yeah, uh, thanks, Bobby, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, I guess specifically for web developers, then you know those things that I said there probably still apply. But then the other things that apply are 
um, you know, thinking about who webs who needs a website. And um, Bobby and I were actually in a conversation earlier today, and we were talking about uh, how important a landing page is to pretty much every startup. And so, um, you know, there's there's immediately a sort of group of people that you could uh, at least find projects with, and um, you know, and engage with. Uh, is our startup community here at the Ed University of Edinburgh now? Whether they've got the money to pay you is a different matter, but you would at least get some good and interesting projects that could be a good shop window for you. And I think that's the other thing as well, is thinking about your own website as a web developer, you know, dep exactly depending on what type of web development we're talking about here. But if you're talking about doing websites for people, then, you know, you need to think about your website and how does that reflect on the work that you're doing? You know, it's a, um, people are not going to employ someone to build their website if their own website is a bit poor. So. Um, you might want to get your own website in order first before you start looking for customers out there. So that could be two things to think about uh, off, off the start. That's a great, that's a great, uh, great connection, great tip there, Ross. Uh, we are currently running our Enterprise Foundation program, um, uh, which is a series of workshops that runs about uh, a semester or so, and we're starting, we're having our second workshop uh, for these people. Um, on Wednesday, and the focus of that is on finding customers and developing a, a minimum viable product, essentially like a type of prototype. Uh, a lot of them are going to be pointed towards developing a, a really simple landing page for their first website. And I suggest that you, you join our community, and you know, if that's something that you'd be willing to do as a service for a low cost, then you know, put it out there. You might say find some customers um, through our own services. Um, and also, just through booking a one to one um, with Ross, one of our other advisors. Yeah, that that once once you're that that's that's you really starting to build the foundation of your of your networks, extending your networks, finding people, and um, you know, we know that we've we've recently registered a, um, a a freelancing web developer, and we've got lots of projects with our web development, and, and we can you know, try our best to make make the right connections. That's a great great point, good connection there, there Ross. Um, cool. Anything else to add uh, on specific web developer related? or anything else yeah i mean it, i mean i think i think it just always goes back to those sort of early projects and, and thinking about where they might come from and you know um in my experience they normally come from someone that you know or at least are aware of and you know and so i think um thinking about that think about who you know that might need your sort of skills will give you some good early projects and and then don't really, you know, don't overextend yourself in those early days. Get a couple of projects under your belt. See how they work. Um, in my experience, web development always takes longer than you think it's going to. So don't, um, don't, uh, don't do too much too soon. You know, see, have a shot at a project. See what it's like. Um, you know, uh, and see how you got on with that. And then the other thing is, it's important to manage expectations um, of people. And you know, it's a bit of a sort of slightly negative way of saying things but don't over promise you know if you if this is your first project and you've not really done something before you know don't say oh yeah i could do everything and i can totally sort out all your problems for you no worries it'll take uh, two days you know and then you discover actually it's something much more in depth and complicated than that it's going to take quite a long time then you know so much better to um yeah be realistic about what you can do and and ensure you keep good communication with any uh, clients that you've got so that they're aware of what's going on. And, and you know, people are aware that things take longer, there's delays and things like that. But if you just let them know, then they're going to be understanding about that, I think. So I think that's a really uh, important way of sort of managing any projects you do have. Just make sure you're keeping your client up to date. Uh, the worst thing can be a, a wall of silence where you've not heard from that dodgy web developer for months now. What on earth is going on there? So, um, yeah, just a a quick update can make a massive difference. Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a great point uh, about setting expectations, making sure that you get paid. Um, there's a, for the, the, the full version of the freelance workshop that we usually do, there's a, a workbook which includes some, like um, initial customer conversation checklist, like what, what are the things that you want to make sure that you, um, that you cover in that first conversation, which includes things like you know, what's the deadline for the work, at what point do you actually get paid, um, and it's important to, um, especially since some of your early customers, if you go into freelancing and, and web development, it might be your friends or family or, or people that you know in your network, you've got to draw that line from when you're going, being a, a friend to when it's it's a professional interaction. 
And, um, and you know, I mean, you don't want to lose any friends or family over it, but you know, you do need to be clear about about setting your expectations um, um, from the beginning about about what is the scope of the work, how much are you going to get paid, making sure that, that that pay is fair, even if it is as someone in your your personal network, um, and then and then just just staying professional by doing things like providing an, an invoice. I mean, even if it's if it's your friend or, or your your brother or whatever. I mean, I think I, I probably should have invoiced my brother for some work. Which I'll get over. That. Um, I'll send this workbook, which we've got. If you if you do register on our site, we'll have uh, um, records of the fact that you've been here today, and and I'll send the workbook out to everyone who's been here today with some conversation checklists, templates of invoices and, and stuff like that. Um, well, we've got just about five, ten minutes, five minutes left. Ross and I both have a meeting. We'll have to get to at the end of this session. Um, but uh, so you know, we'll, we'll just um, have a chat about freelancing in general, um, I suppose. But if anybody has any questions, please uh, raise your hand. Just turn your mic on. Um, let us know. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a moment. Let us know if you've got any questions for us. And thanks so much for coming today. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of uh, your lovely day. Yeah, I mean, I think Bobby. Before there are any questions, oh no, Chris has got a question. Great, good. Yeah, yeah. So hold that thought, Ross. Chris, I think you're allowed to turn your microphone on because you're a, a and as a presenter. So let me know if you've got any your question, Chris. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, I was just wondering, for web development, you often get people who don't quite know, and I'm sure in other fields as well, the client is like not sure what they want. But they ask for like an estimate of price uh, beforehand. So how do you go about providing something that you know is grounded in reality, but will you know be open to changing things sort of all over the place as the project goes on? Yeah, I mean I think that's a really good question, Chris. Actually, um, and that could be often one of the areas where uh, client uh, client and provider relationships fall down is when there is a a bit of a miscommunication about what the expectations of the project are and what what people expect are going to happen. So I think I think it comes back to that thing that we were chatting about a little bit earlier is is kind of setting those expectations and um and and sort of manage you know making it clear what can be delivered and and how much can be done and and part of that might be that um you know if you're talking about sort of website development that you that you ask any clients and this depends what sort of level you're you're talking about here. But if you're if you are thinking about a reasonable size of project, then you might want to ensure that the client gives you a you know a really full and clear brief. And so you might be you might um, you know want to give them a template of what that brief might look like or something like that, and ask them some specific questions so that you can really uh, delve into that and and really be clear about what they they actually want to achieve and get them to think about what they want because you're you know web Lots of people just think, oh, I'll have a website, but actually it's quite a complicated thing, isn't it? There's a lot of different aspects to think about um, about what you want to achieve. So if you can, and, and then depending on you and your circumstances, you know, you can maybe work with them to create that brief or, or you can, you know, get them to go on with it themselves, depending on your view. Yeah, that, that may be one of those things that um, if you go to our to our enterprise toolkit, you'll see a link to the um, creative enterprise toolkit, which the government put out. And I have a feeling that um, things which uh, which can help to generate a customer that that brief about a, a project uh, are probably the types of things that you would find on these on these tools that can help you help you along. And I would say basically agreeing with Ross there. Um, if they don't quite know what they want yet, um, they're not ready for a price estimate. You need to help them figure out what they want. Um, you need to decide if that's worth your time. To help them figure out what they want, you know, you've got to sort of nudge them along. Uh, and I would be, I would be careful about signing yourself up to a project without, without clear goals. So, um, you know, there may be like, you know, if if it's the type of customer that's like, oh, can I give you a hundred bucks to make me a website? Um, and that's and that's all the information they're able to give you. Then they need to do a bit more thinking before before you can really, I would say, engage in that client, um, client and uh, provider relationship. Um, essentially, you know, you you do have the right to choose who your who your customers are and and uh, who your clients are, and I would um I'd give some thought to that. But great great question, Chris. It it happens all the time. 
um, I'm sure. And, uh, and and I would say just to, to try to nudge them along as well as we can. Great, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Oh, okay. Um, so that's all the time that we've got for today. Quick session. Um, please do sign up on our, our website. Have a look at the things that we do. We've got a, um, a tips for freelancers page on our enterprise toolkit. Uh, if you sit down with one of our one-to-one -one advisors, they can help sure, make sure that you're legally registered and, and working working legally and properly and, and help you to think about um, how best to reach your customers and stuff like that. So we really encourage you to do that. Uh, thanks for joining as well, Ross. Uh, and hope to see you all soon. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.